Hello, hello, hey, hi. Welcome to Kai Does Art. I'm Kai, and I do art. <laughs> and along with art, I also do games and other stuff live on Twitch. Feel free to go check that out. And I'm part of a cool collaborative group called Jaded Phoenix. They're pretty rad. Links below. And it's July, which means World Watercolor Month. So let's do watercolor things. Here we are. We got swatches. We got paints. We got stuff. We got things. Okay, so here we have a lovely bin of all of my tube watercolors. It is, it is very full. And while this may seem like an absurd amount of paint, I, for one, would like to stress that my collection has been, like, built up over time. Um, it's not like I ran out and just splurged on all of the paint in one day. And two, I really hope you don't think this is absurd because I have tons of pans and and palettes and whatever other sets and we're gonna go through that today <laughs> so here we this actually this is the first watercolor palette i ever had for paints but um it no longer has the paints in it if that makes sense um I took a watercolor class in college, and my teacher had us buy M. Graham paints. We'll get to those later. But when I invested in more M. Graham paints, I got them a nicer palette to live in. And this now has just, you know, cheap cheap budget friendly uh i think they're pentel pentel f watercolors i don't i don't eat i don't even have the tubes anymore i think i what did i do with them i think i gave them away to a local school so that kids who wanted to paint could um and like this i i use this from time to time in my sketchbook they, they aren't necessarily chalky. A lot of the colors are opaque. They don't like to layer though, so. They do okay in sketches and whatnot in my sketchbook. It seems fine. These are actually outliers. They are not from the same set. These are Koi. And I only have three colors of Koi. Where are they? Oh, on my nifty little swatch card. They are lemon yellow. Chrome yellow and vermilion. I don't know why I only have those three colors. I think I think I got them from my dad while I was in school. So I mean you you can kind of see from here. They're not they're not chalky. They're not glossy. Um they do have texture on them, but they don't like rub off at all. So they're pretty decent. Um, there's no pigment information or light fastness information. I just picked them up from like the grocery store many, many years ago. So I, I would never do like a finished piece to sell with them. But for stuff in my sketchbook, they're great. All right. This guy, this guy also is a cheap, like budget friendly paint. It is Doodle Hog. It's generic. I think it was like $12 on Amazon for the 36 set. I do, I do use it from time to time. Mostly in my sketchbook because again, no, no pigment information or light fastness or anything. But as far as I can tell, if you do, if you do them too thickly, they can get a little glossy. But they seem to be good. Okay, this next one. 
Um, this is a palette I had to buy separately because it was a set of tubes I bought. But these are Art Whale paints. They're also very affordable. Um, they do they do provide pigment information, and they like to shrink and crack when you put them in a palette and let them dry. But they they still they work great. Um, again, I mostly use this in, in sketchbooks or for doodles or whatever, not for like professional pieces, but it's good paint. Surprisingly good for how much it costed. I think the set of 24 was around like 26, 27 dollars when I bought it. And they're they're pretty big tubes. I think they're they're like 12 milliliter or 15 milliliters. Um, the only the only uh, problem child is where is it? I think this the the cerulean blue. As you can see, he is. Can he come out? I th yeah yeah he comes out. He comes out, he was very hard to squeeze out of the tube. It felt all dry and bleh. Um, but it still reactivates and paints fine. So just something to watch out for. This next one. This next one I had to get, cause, cause Cyan. If you don't know, um, Cyan is probably my favorite color. It is very heavily used in my branding and my logos and whatnot. We stand cyan in this house. But this is a 24 pan set by Artsy. And they don't, they look kind of glossy. They feel, I don't know. They feel a lot similar to, um, like Phoenix watercolors and like the Winsor Newton Cotman paints. They, I think this set was around $20. Um, they are worlds better than like the Doodle Hog watercolors, but I would not call them professional. They don't have pigment information or light fastness information, but the, the colors are so pretty. Look at them. They're so nice. <laughs> I think I've only used this for a handful of stuff in my sketchbook. I want to use it more because the tin's really pretty. Also, um, the tin came with, the tin came with this, this pretty cloth and is in a box. It, it very was very on the nose. Like it was trying to be a more affordable uh, like Paul Rubens. Oh, up next I have I have my, my Prima sets. Now I have At first I got I got these two I think a, a few years ago um, and then a while later I got these I know this isn't Prima but I lumped them together in the why why camera I lumped them together just because they're really similar they feel like the same paints they paint like the same paints I'm pretty sure they're the same paints. And then a little more recently, I got these two sets. So my tropicals and my decadent pies are probably my most used ones just because I've had them the longest. Um, with watercolor, a little bit of paint really does go a long way. So like you can definitely see some dips in these pans, but like none of them are running out or anything. And some of these I did, I did clean off um, for this video. 
because a lot of the times I don't clean my palettes and then they end up being a hot mess. This set's fun because it actually it has a few like glittery mica colors. Again, you can you <laughs> you can see how much I've used them. The big the big dips. <laughs> And this one, I really, really like the color selection for this one. This one's so pretty. They have substantially less dips, but I have, I've, I've used this one quite a bit in sketchbooks and I think on like spare watercolor pieces. Um. I haven't done anything, like any professional commissions or anything with these paints, but they do have pigment information. This one, because the paper is folded and they're not in rails, like to stick to this paper sometimes, um, but this is pretty. I also, I really, I really like how they have cutesy names. I mean, you can tell from the pigment information that, like, oh, that should be, you know, phthalo blue, but instead it's, like, butterfly. I don't, I know a lot of people would get upset at that, but I'm here for that. It's rad. These ones, too, are pretty. I think I used these ones, actually, when I did a painting of, um, Neo from, or Neapolitan from Ruby. I think I did her with these pretty pastel colors. Maybe I used other paints too, but I think most of most of her was these. So in all fairness, they do kind of look like ice cream. This one also. This. Oh. Look, those colors are so pretty. I love that. You can tell this one is significantly newer. <laughs> Let's move these out of the way. I think it actually, I think it actually might have been the same time I got the first two Prima sets, the Tropicals and the Decadent Pies. I got this. It was so trendy and pretty and neat and admittedly, I don't I don't use this set as much as I would like to. I think it's just because of how, like, big and bulky it is. But they are, they are pretty colors. This is a, um, Kuretake Ganzai Tambi, uh, 36 set. They are, they are very pretty colors. I do, if you put them on thickly, they're really, really glossy. And um, sometimes they don't they don't like to mix, but they come with a few make colors. I'm I think these types of paints come in so many colors and so big of sets, so that you don't find yourself mixing a ton. So I mean that's nice. I, I mix a ton out of habit. <laughs> and then, when they came out with new colors, you know, because I like those paints and I, I have a problem. Um, I got the new colors too. So, I use these as a mixing palette. It's probably not the best, but... They come in cardboard boxes, and I don't always want to grab one of my, like, porcelain pellets, or I have, like, clear white and plastic, or clear and white plastic pellets to mix on. <laughs> but, they're so, they're so nice. Look, look at this, look at these. 
They're so nice. I also, I have no idea about pigment information. I have seen stores online list them as vegan and um, eco-friendly, which they are not. They are definitely not. Don't, don't buy these paints thinking they're vegan because the, the binder is made from like animal fat and hide byproducts, basically. Not vegan, but very pretty. And um, I also, I picked up this set. This is the uh, Baco, Baco Undo, um, what is it? The shadow, shadow set. It is, the colors are nice. They're, they're essentially these paints mixed with Sumi ink. It makes them real nice and moody. They do, they look way darker and juicier when you lay them down. They have like a really big drying shift, but I still really like them. They're cool and I, yes, I made this swatch card this size on purpose because this doesn't come with a lid and I have a cat and I, I live in, um, I live on the Oregon coast, like right on the beach, and so any, um, like partially moist or like sticky paints, it's so cold and humid here, they stay sticky. So if my cat were to say, jump on my desk and jump off, there would forever be cat hair stuck in my paints. So I made sure this this would protect them. I did I did bring these up earlier when I was talking about the artsy. These are the Phoenix. Um, it says Phoenix all for art. The actual packaging and listing and everything says these are professional watercolors. Um, they do come with uh, pigment information and stuff like that, but they are not professional or like artist grade. They are a student grade paint, and um, I I am not an expert. I don't work for the company or anything, um, but I do believe these are exactly the same as the Windsor & Newton Cotman paints. They have the same pigment information, the same light fastness rating, the same color names. There are a few discrepancies, like intense blue is just thalo blue, um, but that might be like a licensing thing or like a brand specific name for thalo colors. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, they're they're extruded, they're glossy, they're a lot like the art seer. Um, I mean. I think they're a little bit better than the artsy paints, but I don't own any Windsor & Newton Cotman paints or Windsor & Newton paints for that matter. I have used some that a friend let me borrow for like a week and um, these, these really do feel exactly the same and they are a lot more affordable and the tin is nice. I think it's really fun to have that, like the basic black tints look really nice, but I like fun colors and ones that look different. You will see soon I have like a pink one and a yellow one. They're rad. I do have to be careful um, with metal tins. Usually it's not a big deal because I use them just completely folded out and set out on my desk swatch card next to it and so I'm I don't have a ton of um, contact with the raw metal I think the coated the coated metal is probably fine but like if I were out or if I were to go out about plain air painting um, there are some metal tins where this this little ring right here and holding a palette like this 
will turn most of my hand green just just because I'm I'm allergic to nickel and uh, some other metals so I also need to be careful with certain paints that contain those metals because if I accidentally get paint on myself it can turn my skin green I have to go wash it off so that's fun <laughs> And so the, what is it? Uh, uh, one of the Prima sets have had a, like a few sparkly mica colors. And then the Ganzai Tambi set has, I think, like a gold, like a coppery, bronzy color and a silver. Other than that, I don't, I don't have any other metallics. I have some, um... Where is it? I have I have these. They're they're not in here. They're in my pencil case. Um, because I use them in my sketchbook sometimes. But I have these. But other than that, I didn't I didn't I didn't really have any other sparkly things. So I splurged and got this a while ago. <laughs> it's um art philosophy, but it's it's Prima. It's the same. It says by Prima. This is what they, I think they rebranded to Art Philosophy. I'm not sure. But this is just a pretty, a pretty, pretty metallic set. They are so nice. So shimmery. Um, they can, they can mix. Uh, if they sit if you mix two colors and let it sit in the palette, they will separate. Um, but if they're mixed up and then you paint with them, so far in paintings, they have not separated. And I have tried what I think the the Fuji Yasu Tomo pearl colors or what I didn't like them. They were super goopy and gluey. They ruined a bunch of my brushes. I I gave them away, I think. I may have donated them to like an auction thing that benefited um like residencies for people with memory issues. Uh when my husband was a caregiver at one of those facilities. I think I think that's where that set went because I don't have it anymore. But this this set, this set is nice. It it does it does get thick if you get them wet and let them sit for a couple minutes. They get they get really thick and opaque. Um but you can you can also get like just a really pretty like shimmer effect if you use them thinly. Um, this swatch card isn't special. I didn't like tape on a piece of black paper. This is just black alcohol marker underneath it. But yeah, these was my metallic paints. <laughs> Again, another brand just like the Phoenix that's like Oh, these are professional watercolors. It's a lie. They're not. Uh, these are the, I think the 24 tube set of the Shinhan professional watercolors. Shinhan does have professional watercolors, but they're, I think, the, the PWC line and the SWC line. And they're like extra fine or whatever. These are not those. These are just a cheaper, affordable set. They're called professional watercolors, but I'm 90% they're student grade. Um, they do have some really pretty colors. I really like this Bordeaux. Actually, it's so nice. The earth tones are named weird, but um, they're nice. These colors mix well. I've used them in lots of... Um, like color studies and color mock-ups. Uh, I mean, for art and also graphic design. 
it's nice just to be able to do various thumbnails like blocking out colors without feeling guilty for using my really high-end paints so I like I like having more affordable paints around that I don't feel so guilty for using but yeah these are my shin hands I and I would I would keep this in here a lot a lot of the swatch cards I make I like to keep them in the palette so that they don't get lost or anything um but because this palette specifically keeps paint on both sides I want to maybe cover this in packing tape or something first just so it, it doesn't get paint all over it so for now it lives outside of the palette that's fine if I could afford it I would love to have like a laminator and then like put the velcro on my palette so I could just you know that'd be rad but maybe in another life and this is my my pretty pretty rosa set again it's it's a fun metal tin in a different color I like it but I got this is actually um what is it the 21 color modern set I I cleaned this off to make it nice um this is the the 21 color modern set so it has stuff like um Indian green blue cobalt turquoise turquoise most of these colors is why I bought this set um <laughs> a I guess a little longer than a few years ago I got a set of white knights you'll see those soon and I I really like the paints and how they act and how they work it makes sense because they stay wet and sticky and act a lot like um M. Graham paints which are my favorite um I got them on discount from ordering directly from Russia so um, yeah I, I basically I wanted more night, white nights colors without having to buy them open stock because for me that was significantly more expensive than buying them in sets and so um, they're not the same quality these ones are student quality but um, I got I got a set of these Rosa Galleries and a set of their other student line Sane so that I could have more more colors. I really like them. They're rad. Hey hi. Next day voiceover Kai. I actually had to re-record all of this. Um, to try to fix some audio issues so fingers crossed let's hope it's fixed and let's go here we are with our pretty pretty uh, Sony set with like I said before the pretty uh, yellow tin I I like this tin so much <laughs> it's Burke's joy but um, these are like I said before, the um, student student range of Wait Nights, they're they're so pretty, and the set itself was really affordable. And also, some of these colors, um, especially like the violet, it seems a lot more blue on camera, but that's it's like a deoxazine purple color, um, really close to this. Actually, I don't know why they're so different. But, like, the purples and, and this, like, turquoisey color, these greens, um, Brincy and Ember, Ember, they're colors I use a ton. I guess also these, like, cooler reds, this pretty blue. And, uh, I'm not at risk of running out of my White Nights anytime soon, but, like, it's nice to know I have more of colors I use a lot 
and in the case of the Rosa that we just saw, um, colors I really like from other brands but don't have in White Knights. Um, so yeah, they act, they act really, really similarly. Um, and I like them. I really, I really like them. Up next we have the one we've been talking so much about. Oh, I, um, were there, did I have a lot of stickers on the other ones? If I did, I'm so sorry. I'll try to plug in, um, like what artists did what stickers. This one is by a Twitch streamer I follow, uh, Fancy Schmancy. He's super rad. Um, I like, don't take this the wrong way, but I, I really, I really appreciate how his, his, like, line art especially is super clean, but, um, like, the, the subject is kind of gross. Like, um, I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to call these lizard guys gross, but he, he has some art that's just, ooh, but I love it so much. And I actually, I won, I won some of his stickers in, like, one of his on-stream giveaways. So that, that was really rad. Um, so here are, here are my pretty, pretty white knights. This palette is absolutely massive. And, uh, most of the time, I actually, I take this out. And just use it like this. Um... Sometimes I have this on the side. I, I use this a lot, actually, for uh, some other paints. Just because it's, it's easy to have a thing out than to, like, get one of my palettes out. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's a whole thing. But I, I really like these paints. And, like, oh, why did I do that? I was, gonna, I was just about to say, like the other... Um, ones by the same company, they, they stay moist, they stay sticky, it could be my, where I live, like the humidity and climate here, you can see how semi-moist they are, um, some of them, some of them have deeper color dips than others, but, um, these, these are actual, like, artist grade, professional paints and they're they're pretty affordable i did get this on like a discount because i ordered it directly from a store in russia but this is the 36 whole pan set and i think i paid something like 45 or 48 dollars for them um so i mean as as far as professional paints go like that is a steal. <laughs> and yeah, the the Sane and the Rosa have been a little cheaper than them. And I really, I really like them. They're so nice to work with. And here, here is a really fun palette. Um, this is from a local surf shop. I knowing how my camera freaked out at the texture of one of my sketchbooks i'm not entirely sure my camera can handle this but here's a fun fun marceline sticker i got on um red bubble yeah red bubble and um this is this is my mission goals um if I can open them. Or I guess Magello Mission Gold Class. They're they're my mission golds though. They're super nice. They're also uh kind of sticky. I believe they're also made with honey. Maybe I'm just a big sucker for paints made with honey. Um but this, uh, I got, what did I got? I got, I think, birthday money from my grandma and uncle a few years ago. And I love them. They are my favorite people. 
but I I got this set with them. I think it was somewhere around fifty or fifty-five dollars for this thirty-six set. They are so cute. Some of these colors have been put in like custom palettes, but it is also really nice to just. This set came with this palette big enough to hold all of the colors that came in it. Not not a ton of brands do that. And also, I, I really like this brand of palette. I have a handful of Magello palettes that other paints are in. They're, they're so cool. This was a, a fun way of getting to a Lake Noah brand, I guess. Because I know there was a lot of hype about their bigger, um, like, single pigment mixing set. Um, which is significantly more expensive because they come in big tubes. But this was 36 colors, I think, in, like, 7 milliliter tubes. So they were a little bit smaller. But there's more than enough in there to fill, like, I think a half pan three times. So, that's, it's still, it's a lot of paint. This one's next. This one's just... I think I got this palette for a couple bucks at Walmart, but, you know, it's a trusty little palette. This fun sticker is made by another streamer artist. I... I like to watch, but she's not live a ton. I think she does uh, more on, like, Behance and other platforms. But, um, her name's Too Senseless. She has some really pretty art. I got... What did I get? I think I got like a pack thing from her shop when she had like a shop sale and it came with a few stickers, um, I think a bookmark and a couple prints. But in here, in here is my core paints. Um, Core is made by Golden, and this palette is perfect for them because I had exactly 12 colors. Um, I have the introductory set of six, and then the high chroma set of six, so I just kind of mixed and matched, put them in here. I know they offer other sets, um, what I think... I think to get, I couldn't get any more of the introductory sets without also getting overlapping colors, and I heard that their earth tones are not super great, so I stayed away from their earth tone sets, but um, one of my favorite artists, who I watch a ton on YouTube and I've learned a ton about color mixing and pigments and, and whatever from um, her YouTube channel is In Liquid Color. Uh, she, I believe, said in one of her videos about this brand that while their earth tones struggle a bit, um, their spectral colors are so pretty. And she's right. She's right. Look at those. Look, look, look at those. Especially, like, from here to here. Like, all these, all these pretty, like, jewel colors. Mm. I love them. <laughs> so, um... Also, uh, like the, the Magellos I just showed you, right? They're, they're super beginner friendly. They kind of stay where you put them. They don't run away from you a ton. Um, these are the exact opposite. If your paper is even the slightest bit wet, um, these colors like to just jump to the far side of the paper. <laughs> but I they're they're fun. They've been they've been a blast to play around with. I don't have um like a ton of paints that behave that differently from each other. So I'm, sometimes I just I play with them both on the same day. That's some fun wild contrast. <laughs> After quick lunch break, I'm back with this little cutie. Um, 
he is he is not as tasty as he looks because there's paint inside this um <laughs> it's so cute with just uh, just the five colors but this actually is a um a test pack set I found on Amazon of Sennelier so we have we have some pretty basic uh, mixing colors um, on their own actually they they do great together but I also have them put in some custom palettes where I use them like along with M. Graham and Daniel Smith paints they act a lot like the M. Graham paints um, I think it's probably because of the again the honey I I I have a problem I am such a sucker for for the honey binding <laughs> this this fun boy I got this I got this for uh, Christmas from my little brother it came all wrapped up in a fancy cloth in a fancy box and then he also bought me a, a fancy vinyl sticker I put on here this Gengar is so cute. <laughs> now, when he asked me what I wanted for Christmas, right? I asked him for the 24 set because I thought it was a really good color range, and they were really they had really good reviews. They they were super decent. They were professional grade. And this this boy. This boy splurged on me. He got me the big 48 set. What, what do I even do with this many colors? I tell you what I do with them. I paint with them. <laughs> Here we have, um, not, not a palette. Um, this, these are my peerless paints. And I actually, I have a clip here. Because, where, where is it? I actually, I'm, so, they come in these books, and this book would have 15 colors, but then I also bought a set with an additional 15 colors, and then I cut pieces of paper that matched the page sizes to put them all in the book together. I tried to put them in like color order along with how the book pages were arranged. So we're not gonna go through this page by page because if you like there's so much saturation you can't really see what the color is supposed to look like anyway. Like that's that's a pink. That's a pink! These, these are really fun to play with. Um, I have no idea about the pigment makeup and they say they're, they're self blending and they're professional and um, I believe they were originally made to color like strips of film. Um, so I don't know how light fast they are on paper or anything. I imagine not very. They, they act and they feel like they're dye based, not pigment based. And, but they're still really fun to play with. Even if something's dye based and not super light fast, like, that's not, to me at least, that's not like the end of the world. But, um, if you have been around for a while or maybe catch me during art streams and whatnot over on Twitch. You probably know I have a little bit of a um, alcohol marker uh, problem. Maybe maybe the, there can be a future video where I go through all of my alcohol markers. Warning, I, I, <laughs> I have a lot. <laughs> There's actually a point redeem on my Twitch channel um, to reveal. Oh, oh goodness! The point redeem on my Twitch channel for a marker box reveal. 
it's not marker month. We're not here to talk about markers. We're here to talk about waterfalls. And now, oh, we're okay. This is getting awkward because I actually I have I have three here, but they're all kind of kind of connected. So these. These are my babies. These are my favorite, favorite, favorite paints. Um, well, all, all three of these together, actually. So this is, um, my M. Grams. Oh, here's, here's another sticker from, uh, Two Senseless. But these are, come on. My M. Grams. They are. I will not be touching them. You you can see how wet they are. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see how well loved my palette is. <laughs> these are my favorite favorite paints. Uh, most of these, I think, I think in college, when I took a watercolor class, I bought like ten colors. And then maybe a couple months after that class, I got three or four more colors, and um, I think while my husband and I were dating, but before I was pregnant with my daughter, he actually bought me like another three or four colors, and just over over time, my collection has grown. So these, this is the the color selection in this palette. Um, for a while, as you see, I have this guy here. He's just got extra colors that don't have a home right now. For a while, the extra colors that didn't have a home in this guy lived in here. There still is paint in here. If I was smart, I would have moved this paint when I set up this palette. But I was not smart, and, um... So now I have a bunch of paint in this palette that is also in this palette. But that's fine. We're fine. This, this one I wanted to do kind of separately, but it is linked because there are a lot of, um, a lot of these colors are M-Gram, but another two senseless sticker. <laughs> um, so a lot, a lot of these paints are M-Gram, but... There are also some newer ones, um, because what, if you look carefully, you can tell a few outliers have a different finish and are not as sticky. That is because I got the, the sixth set of Daniel Smith Primatech, so I think that is what the, the Pymonite Genuine, Hematite Genuine, um, Jadeite, we have the uh, Mayan Blue Amethyst and Rhodonite Genuine. And then I also, I got a few other Daniel Smith colors. So we have the, the Green Gold, Quinacridone Coral, and Moon Glow. It, it, is, it is very weird um, being used to working with, with the thick gloopy honey wet paints and then just randomly having a couple colors in your palette that like actually dry and set but like it's it's fine it's fine they're they're both really high-end brands so I don't mind using them together but then there were there were some other Daniel Smith colors that I wanted to buy and these two palettes are full but I couldn't justify getting another one of these palettes for just a few colors. And that's that's where this fun guy comes in. Um, this palette also is pretty rad. Uh, they stack or close. Um, it's like a couple bucks, I think, on Jerry's or Grama. So if I was smart, I would have got more than one because I had free shipping. Now if I want to order another one, it's still only a couple bucks, but then I have to pay shipping, <laughs> which makes it like $10. Oh, but um, yeah, in here, in here we have some, 
some really pretty colors I wanted to try out. I got Rose of Ultramarine, Raw Umber Violet, Perline Green, Burnt Sienna, and Raw Sienna. And, um, I got, I got these because I actually I didn't have any Siennas. I have Burnt Umber and Raw Umber and Quinacridone Gold and... Uh, I think I have Quinacridone Rust, but I didn't have any Siennas, so... These are... These are my babies and I love them. <laughs> this set alone has been growing since... Since I was in college. My buddy, my buddy Jeff, my friend old Jeff, bought me this super cute palette. And it's actually, it's, it's a little bigger than like an extra large phone. But it's not so big that you can't take it around with you. I don't travel with it, but that's just because, I mean, you've all just seen how many of my paints are honey based. But it came with 40 half pans, which is so many colors. But these are the colors I put in there. So there's some super basic, really good for mixing colors. Um, there's some slightly different but yielding alternate mixes, which I may or may not like better colors. There's some convenience colors. There's just... Like, this whole row is just pretty colors that I like. <laughs> Same with this whole row. <laughs> um, some darks. Admittedly, I don't, I don't use this a ton as its own palette, but I do find myself uh, pulling a couple colors out of it to use on their own every now and again. So that's fun. We got we got a fun fun custom palette. Probably the one palette with the most colors I own and it's one of the smallest palettes I own. This was my first like uh I was going to say my first custom palette, but if you want to get technical, that would be like the Mgram one. Um but this is the the first palette I had where like I did a bunch of swatches, a bunch of color mixing of a bunch of different brands and paints I owned. I picked the colors I thought were the most useful or the ones that I would use a ton or ones I have used a ton. And I put them together in this hair palette. And um, I actually, uh, if you want to open... This, like other Magello palettes, comes with like a clear tray that sits here, but it pops out all the time every time I open this, so I just, I took it out. I still mix on it, it just, it lives by my water jars up there. Um, and I did, it did clean this really good and then, and then the, the, got it messy again with a couple doodles and some swatches, but, um, Actually, instead of, in, it's, it's slightly in color order, but not really, because I wanted, I wanted my warm and cool, like, primaries right here, front and center, ready to mix anything I wanted to mix, and then I have colors, um, that I use for skin tones a lot over here, so the, the Naples yellow, green gold, Quinn rose, Quinn, Quinn gold? All these over here and as you go further this way it goes into earth tones which at the time I made this I don't own any um well it's uh M. Graham or Daniel Smith like Sienna I think I have Coors Sienna here um and then this way we have we have fun blues I use a lot like Prussian Anthroquinone blue, turquoise, cobalt turquoise, or cobalt teal, and then deoxazine violet, maroon perline, Payne's gray. Just all fun, I guess moody colors I tend to use a lot. So this is this is kind of like my main palette 
if you will. Like the ones with the M. Graham and Daniel Smith are, are easily my favorite paints, but this is like, I guess the most practical palette that I've set up myself. So here's another st sticker from the surf shop. There used okay, so we looked at all of my watercolor palettes. I'm so hyped. I, I realize this video is getting really long. It's a monster. But I thought it, it might also be something uh, fun or maybe you wanna see. I have plenty of things that are like watercolor adjacent. <laughs> so here, um, I have the Arteza watercolor pencils. They're not, they're not like the expert ones, but they work good. I like them. I don't use them a ton. But the couple times I have played with them, they were really fun. I do like them. I, of course, have a mister and a spray bottle I keep at my desk. Jars of water. Stuff like that. I don't need to drag those on screen, I don't think. Um, a little further away from watercolors, we have my, my dip pens. Um... I have these inks I like to use for line art. They're nice and, I guess, reliable. Whatever. I also have these Windsor Newton uh, drawing inks. I think I put them in the package upside down, but I've only played with these a few times, but they've been really fun to play with. I kind of want to play with them more. Along the same lines, we have we have this fun, fun little box I usually break out around Inktober. Um, I got I got a grindstone and one of these cool ink blocks. Um, I keep my my spare nibs in here. There's a couple spare nib holders. I have some of these the acrylic or not acrylic. The Higgins like India inks. And I have I have them colored too. They haven't moved in a while, so. But there's um what is this? Indigo, Carmine, White. And I have I have actually two things of black, because we used to have to use these a ton when I was in school. Um Surprisingly, not for watercolor class or painting class, but actually for drawing class, we had a whole, like, um, I guess section of the class was dedicated to, like, CMA painting, which is also why I have, uh, these, my ink brushes, well, hockey brushes and bamboo brushes, but they're really nice. I realize I probably could use these for watercolor, but um, I have I have some like um, uh, what is the word? Sable, sable brushes and some quill brushes. So I really pull these out for watercolor. They they do good with ink though. So I keep them with my ink stuff. Now, closer to watercolor, we have we have masking fluid, we have watercolor ground. I haven't really messed with this a ton, but it came with the um, six set of Permatech colors I got. So I thought maybe maybe it might be fun to do this on like like a canvas panel or a piece of wood or something like that, <laughs> and then be able to watercolor over it. <clears throat> That might be really pretty. I have sponges. I just I keep them out on my desk, just in case. Um, these actually, these actually are stacked up backwards. Hang on. We want this honking one first. This is um 
years ago when my husband and I were first dating, I I knew I really liked watercolor, but I actually I watched a ton of an artist all the time on YouTube. Um, her name is Audra Eclair, and she uses a lot of gouache. And I had no idea what gouache was, or how to find it, or where to get it. And I told Nick about it, and he actually. The same grocery store where I got the very first watercolor palette we looked at, the Pentel paints, we got these. And I think... Are they the same? No. I thought for a second they might have been the same brand. I think these are like Art Advantage or something. Um, I, I don't remember. I don't know if I even still have tubes. I still use these sometimes, but usually just in like my sketchbooks. Not really for like anything serious. I have like kind of used them a couple times. You can tell it's been a while. They're so, they're so cracked. I also, I didn't know any better, so I filled them up, and then when they like dried and shrank down and cracked up, I filled them up again, <laughs> thinking that would solve the problem. Instead, now they're just they're they're just cracked in layers. <laughs> This is fine. They still re-wet fine. They still work fine. I'll, I'm not like wasting them. They're still fine. I really like them. Um, and then a while ago when they were really trendy, I guess. I don't. What? It probably it probably was like maybe three three or four years ago. I got these. I have not opened these in a minute, so my apologies if, um, oh, they don't look the best inside, and I, I keep the palette out of it. Oh, actually, they, they don't look bad at all. I have the, the Maya Himi paints, um, even though I've had these for years, I, I don't use them a ton. I tend to use them in like mixed media sketchbooks here and there. They are fun to play with. I do like them. I just, I don't use them a ton. If it's this much paint for that affordable of a price. I think when I first got this, it was, it was like $16 or $17. It was just, it was insane to me and I had to have it. It, I did not think to actually sit down and think of how often I use wash and whether or not I would be justified buying this much paint because like these these cups are huge um so most most of them are still pretty full uh of course I went this long I went this long being fine I got paint on myself at the very end of course but, um, that's, it's probably also kind of my fault because, um, just to make sure they don't dry up or go bad or get gross every, I, probably three or four weeks, I pull it out, open it up, spray it, like just spray water in it, and then mix up the colors with like a toothpick or the end of a paintbrush or something and wipe it off really good and put the lid back on. So, they're still, they're still wet. Again, it could have something to do with where I live. As you can tell, all, all of my paints like to stay moist and sticky. It could be where I live. And then, um, these, actually, not that long ago, I think it might have been sometime around like was it the beginning of this year maybe I got I got the big big like 60 set box of uh, Arteza wash and they do they do crack up and shrink down a little bit but like they're still fine even even though these are all super crackly and flaky they're not like falling off and filling these other parts with the wrong color if that makes sense so um 
I really like these. They work really well. They're nice and flat and matte. Um, this obviously doesn't have all 60 colors in it, but, you know, I'm, I also, I don't think you ever really need 60 colors, and if you did, I don't, I don't know. It's a ton of colors, like an absolute ton. Look at this, this is a lot of colors for me. <laughs> I say in a video where I've spent the last hour just going through colors, it's fine. Oh, and also, part of that 60 set has metallics, so here they are. They also, um, you know, shrink and crack like the other gouache, but they're also pretty. Oh my goodness. If you're still here, thank you so much. You are such a trooper, like an absolute mad lad. I had no idea this would be this long um, when I started this, and oh, is it a long? If you like the music, it was made by my buddy Cardinal Bucks. I'll make sure to um, put his links and stuff below. Thank you so much again for joining me and hanging out and stuff. Have a beautiful day. I'll see you all next time. Bye!